Uh, and my name is Ahir, Kathy Ahir, so that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm going to talk about um, slightly different to what people have been talking about. There's bits and pieces that are similar. Um, I'm about the people and the connection um, around student learning. So I'm going to take you through a little pathway of, let's see if I can get these screens to work, to talk about what my program's about, what we do, the communities that we develop, an impact from that and the program. So there's different stages. Um, so FFYE stands for a program called First and Further Year Experience. Um, it's a institution-wide program that we have at UTS. Um, it's a community and practice program. And it's looking at the, originally it was designed for students from low SES students, so low socioeconomic background students, coming into university um, to support them into university through university and out through teaching practices that are inclusive. So the key, the key thing was that if we could do in, could pra good practice or inclusive practice from, uh, with these students, it's actually gonna benefit all students. And so we have this little framework where the students, we want to focus on two things, identity and belonging. So um, from what you've, um, Jingbo was talking about was trust. For a student to be engaged in university learning, they need to feel that they belong. They need to feel they've got the capacity to achieve that and that they need to be motivated. So this is a process that's affected by curriculum, by people and by university infrastructure. So we address that in our work. And then we use these research principles around um, what people are saying, what there's been whole communities around, how do you support the students coming into university? It's called a transition. Um, and uh, the third generation transition said, you've got to have university wide impact. It's everybody's business. Those students transition means not just the dollars in it, it means support for students to achieve the goals that they intend to achieve. They're putting a lot of effort, if particularly um, at, uh, cultures that haven't had the experience in their family background around universities, just going to university is a big commitment. So to achieve success in that is um, a desire for us, but it also sits behind our quality framework, TEXA, which is the organization that looks at teaching and learning matters, say that if we're bringing students into university, we have a, a responsibility to ensure that those students are supported to be successful. So we're looking at an institution-wide approach and an institutional strategy fitting in with that. We use an approach called transition pedagogy. So these are principles that help the academics think about, very focused on inclusive practice, um, belonging and well-being. And we use the concept of um, open of learning communities through the community of practice theory of Wenger and distributive leadership. So we're looking at the process of formal and informal leadership. So it's not training, it's about um, engaging people into a practice um, that they may or may not take it on. Um, our results, our impact, I'll show later that they have actually taken on this work. So a little bit about what we do. We have grants, little grants, and they were mentioned before. And these academics have to apply for these in subjects. Um, they have to show that um, they can address an issue they want to look at um, through an, an intentional design, student-centered design, inclusive practice, and they apply these things, these transition pedagogies, at least one of them. Um, and then they, have, they trial a project in the class Academics need some sort of resourcing for this and some um, the resourcing and a grant given to them gives them a sort of a, a little bit more status in the faculty that they're doing some work, um, they're being paid to trial something, they'll, they'll evaluate it in their work, then they'll report on it and then um, disseminate it. So they do that. Um, then we have these forums, these big community forums. Um, we can get 80 to 100 people coming to these forums They're around two hours. Um, this little image I've got here is an academic who's got a grant, who's got us all engaged in a, what he calls um, uh, improv. We're doing activities to engage us, to meet and connect. And the idea of, of this is that we can take the practice into the classroom to get students to meet and connect, but also to start being confident in having discussions in the room. 
because quite a lot of students in this person's a tutor, he said, he's in a communication subject and he said, I can't get people to talk. But by bringing this in, I've actually changed the dynamic of the room and the very shy ones do talk. So we were all engaged and it was a lot of fun. We have a lot of interactive activities. Um, these people are planning um, an inclusive practice pro, uh, idea and we have students coming to our forums. We listen to students. We get a lot of value from hearing what the students are saying. We have an online community that um, has um, right across the university uh, engagement, uh, 850 people are on that, and that's an MS team site. And I work with, um, I'm the central coordinator, so I work in the um, teaching and learning area across the university. There's faculty coordinators as well um, in each faculty. They're academics in first year usually, um, and they work with me to get the local buy-in, and they work with me talking to the other side of the student's experience, the co-curriculum environment. So working around, making sure that we touch base through meetings and, and we do some planning to make sure that the student in the classroom and the student outside the classroom, what, 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 um, how we can draw together to make it better. Because a lot of students say, I don't know what support is in the uni. I know my teacher or my tutor, um, and I see that person short time, but that's it. So it's about bringing that together. And this is what we call our community of transition practice. So some of the stuff we do, we do the forums, as I mentioned, we know that academics are really time poor, so they, the forums have to be of value. And we model the inclusive practice. So we have time for community building, we have time for learning and time for sharing and reflecting. And we have opportunities for ongoing collaborations. So like Jingo was saying about connecting people um, from different disciplines, we are actually doing that as well within the teaching environment to go into another area. And, and that's through ca uh, casual conversation sitting. So the images here um, on the bottom one, these people are playing a game around um, in, uh, academic integrity in trial. And this, this academic is a researcher in science, quite a senior, and he's picked up one of our grants. This is an academic in um, teaching and learning. And this person is from law. And so they're working together. Over here, we've got, um, this was um, taken from a forum called, um, I think it was a student engagement forum. So we had a guest speaker talking to us around what is it that uh, we need to do around student engagement. And then there was, a, there was time for sharing. And these people from a range of faculty, I think we actually had 150 people at that forum. Um, the topics have to be relevant to the academic. They have to, and, and I've just picked up this year's topics where I work with a teaching and learning team. And so um, I usually lead the hot topic with the forum and the academics again have to come, if they're coming, if they've got to be able to take something away from them and it's belonging. And in this case, the student panels worked really well. The activities worked really well. Uh, and we know that from our feedback forum, from, from we do surveys immediately after the forums. Um, um, and this image is about I, a students as partners program uh, session that we had uh, a couple of years ago, where we we're trying to look at what practices we could do. And the students led each of the tables um, for the activities and then summarized and then came back and presented the data. So that was another great engagement practice. We bring, um, we have um, people who come to these forums from a range of backgrounds. They could be casual academics, they could be um, professors, uh, they could be professional staff. And so we need to make sure that we have practices that bring um, an opportunity for both the curriculum and co-curriculum people to talk together. So that building that connection, that belonging, that sharing. Um, and this example I've got here is it's taken from the student learning hub have been noticing the journey of the students as they go through the university and they they want to know what did the academics see the students journey so people went into breakout rooms and um, uh, worked out on this jam board for each for each room had its own jam board where they saw the students were doing the work the diff, what they needed to do at different or what what they saw they did across the different weeks of the semester. And then, then that can get compared to what the student services had picked it up. And so that's a comparison. So that was, um, I thought was a great um, synergy between the two groups. So the impact 
For me to look at impact of forums, we've got two ways of doing it. I, I count data, who's ever is in, who's ever is part of my community, who's ever come to a forum, who's done a grant, who's um, been involved in any way, I put them in a database. I track who they are, what faculty they are, what, um, uh, what role they have. So it's faculty name, role, um, which discipline they're in, email address, of course, and then if they attend. If they respond to me, um, I, I send out invitations to get my numbers. Generally, our webinars um, or forums or um, meetings, we tend to get 30 people at the most. And um, with mine, they're growing to 100 or over, over enrolled. People say, now say to me, Kathy, can you send this to your list? There's over 1,000 people in that list now. Uh, and that, that's updated um, with people who drop out. As soon as I send an email, I find that the university has retrenched this person or this person, so they've got to go. Um, and then the new people come in. Um, so I, I make sure I have information. Um, so when I send out a forum invite, I make sure that I have a week, a month's notice with a busy academic. They need a month. Um, anyone who responds to me gets ticked into the box. Then those who didn't respond, they get another email two weeks later to say, oh, just a reminder, did you see this email? Da, da, da. Um, again, I might get more, more interest, capture that. And then just before the uh, forum, I'll, if I have space, I will advertise again, but only to those who haven't registered. I get buy-in by my associate deans, teaching and learning. So they're the people who run the teaching and learning in each faculty and by the faculty coordinators. I make sure I send to them um, uh, a couple of weeks before the forum, uh, who, how many from their faculty are coming? So I collect that data by faculty. Um, and how many um, could they push out and give a little bit of a, a side, their side? But uh, also collect the data of which categories, and that's what this forum, this list is showing. So I've got all the different areas that come, and you'll see that um, faculties for UTS faculties finish here. It's our teaching and learning unit. Indigenous unit, student services unit, library, uh, center of social justice, so equity, marketing, uh, planning quality unit, HC, um, human resources unit, student admin unit, ITD unit, uh, um, and you can so you can see a range of areas, and then I have other groups. I have students coming, I have students association, I have university college. Um, and external visitors. I invite people from outside, including your, um, uh, well, the New South Wales um, University's um, teaching and learning person. And we do, um, we capture impact of these forums from manual surveys, but we also pack them immediately after the forum. Um, and this has been trialed this year where we do a quick do, do a quick form and ask them to give feedback of uh, which faculty they've come from, what were the best parts, um, and then we go, dial it down and how, how did they rate the forum? So this, this bit here is on that. Um, so when I want to show impact of the program, so that includes grants and forums, um, and, and this year we've now got this online community, I need to be able to show it from a university perspective. Um, so I'm showing it from the data point, the student success data. I'm showing it from uh, the awards, teaching and learning awards that people get because many grant holders get all teaching and learning awards. I show by the uptake of um, practices across the faculties. I can show every faculty has had some impact. We've now had over 200 grants, 147 subjects. Um, the impact for the university is that we're the largest community of practice. Um, and I also can show um, teaching and learning uh, leadership development from the coordinator. So we, we, a lot of our people who have come through the trail working with me get moved forward. So that's all impact of this program. And we've won national awards. So when I go to the faculty level of the DVC, I give them reports um, with the graphical pass rate. No one looks at commencing data. They don't seem to be picking up. Um, and here I've split it. Whoops, we'll go back. Here I've split it between the domestic, low SES and international, and I wanna show what changes were happening across the sector. I also wanna show the faculties how many grants are coming out of each faculties. And you see science is the biggest uptake 
these um, science picks up students um, probably with a lower ATAR than the other faculties. Um, and so they've put a lot of work in working with those students. So I need to show success data. I need to show, um, I use this data as well, tracking particularly this, um, this data is picked up. I, I uh, explore the um, Cognos um, business intelligence system and pull the data and turn it into confidence interval data and then present it um, to the deans. And, and I can pick up that there's, if depending on when people arrive, I can work out there's an area of concern, second, the second entry groups actually do 10% lower in pass rates and others. So what's happening there Who, and which faculties and, and so I divide it into faculty level. So every associate dean gets their own little picture of this. And I mean, it's quite intense, it's quite big. Um, I give them feedback on community, the topics, who's attending and the surveys. And I give them feedback on the grants, the uptake and I tell stories around the grant practices. So I draw on those reports. Um, so if I'm talking to the academics though, I want to give them feedback. And so we've developed, when I was showing them the graphs, those graphs didn't mean anything. So we got in and developed a dashboard for the academics to know around their subject. And so they can say who's coming in daily, which degrees they're seeing, what range of backgrounds they've got, English, non-English, that's what it is, what pathway they've come in, um, and then the gender groups and the age groups. And then they have other pages that will tell them pass rates and another page is enrollments withdrawals. And for the coordinators that I work with, they need to be able to talk up, up to their associate deans and they need to be able to understand the dashboards that are existing around the place. Um, plus, I also give them data. And that's where I'm finished. <laughs>